Fillmore, I'm on it. A parody of popular police dramas from the 1970s, Fillmore is centered around reformed juvenile delinquent Cornelius Fillmore and his partner Ingrid Third, who are both members of the Safety Patrol at X Middle School. You're athletic, albeit wily moves. You use albeit too? Great minds speak alike. You're queen for a day, Ingrid. Welcome to The Rewind. Today, we'll be counting down the top 10 Fillmore episodes. Before we begin, make sure to give this video a like and hit the subscribe button for good luck. Number 10, Immune to All But Justice. <laughs> Are you sure you're the same Penny I used to know? Look who's talking. Ingrid and Fillmore have a tough case on their hands. They both know Winston Cotter is the culprit behind a counterfeit baseball card operation, but can't arrest him because he has diplomatic immunity. Fillmore also reunites with his ex-girlfriend Penny, who he rescues before spending some quality time with her towards the tail end of the episode. Penny accidentally reveals that she was involved in the counterfeit operation and shows the hidden stash of counterfeit cards to Fillmore. Right before she's arrested, Fillmore cuts Penny out of his life for good. And one last thing, baby. That chicken was dry. Real dry. Number 9. The Unseen Reflection Ready Tear, Ready Tour. Fellow fans, I present to you Vampirita, Vampire Astronaut. A series of novels called Vampirita has attracted a huge following at X Middle School, and no one is more obsessed than Tori and Terry. When the novel franchise offers to feature its biggest fans in its upcoming release, Tori and Terry work tirelessly on several audition pieces, but each project is destroyed. TQ and Trace are both identified as suspects in the investigation, but when evidence points to their innocence, things become even more confusing. Who could have had enough knowledge of the projects to have sabotaged them? Terry got hold of the advanced reader copy of the new Vampirita novel from her cousin who works for the publisher, but it was lousy. Number 8. Red Robins Don't Fly I'm a transfer from another Red Robins troop across town. What troop? Local 769, Midtown. Midtown, eh? In an undercover sting operation, a box of banned candy is discovered in the lake and traced back to the Red Robins. At first glance, the Red Robins seem like your everyday Girl Scout troop with an award-winning taffy. But upon further investigation, they're actually cheaters who played dirty just to have the odds in their favor. They've only been able to get away with it for so long because they've never been caught in the act. Ingrid goes undercover as one of the Red Robins, but unexpectedly becomes the new leader after their original leader graduates. Will Ingrid be able to shut down the Robins for good, or will she turn to the dark side? Ingrid, where have you been all our lives? Around. Well, now you're in. Congratulations. Number 7. Foes Don't Forgive Now I will make Barcode disappear! Reformed thug Linus Santiago wows the students of X Middle School with his magic act during the talent show. Unfortunately, his disappearing trick with Dewey's robotic dog, Barcode, goes horribly wrong when he can't get the dog to reappear. Due to the magician's code, Santiago can't reveal how he managed to make Barcode vanish, which makes him a prime suspect in the dog's disappearance. Dewey is understandably anxious since Barcode is his stepping stone to having a real dog. It seems as if all hope is lost when Barcode's collar is found in the river, which is bad news for both Dewey and Santiago. Kip? You took Barcode? But why? Number 6. Cry, the beloved mascot. We got a goat! Someone has stolen X Middle School's mascot, Lobsty the Lobster. Time is running out for Lobsty and the Bocce team, and the only possible lead to finding him might come from X's resident psychic, Alastair Greystone. The safety patrol is hoping Alastair can find Lobsty before time runs out, but will his psychic abilities be enough? Ah! 
Number 5. This Savior a Snitch Hey! How come he got in free? Get in? Hey, hey, no one's allowed backstage! Fillmore is on the verge of expulsion thanks to Principal Folsom's new Three Strikes and You're Out rule. The thing is, Fillmore is being framed for a crime he didn't commit, the destruction of the giant Folsom statue made out of 12,000 pieces of macaroni. Now Fillmore has to protect the only evidence he has to help prove his innocence and find the real culprit behind this mess before it's too late. And what were you doing at the backstage door? Uh, I was selling illegal backstage passes for $5 a piece. Number 4. Tamar Astal <gasps> No! No! Stainless? The first episode of the series kicks off with some good old graffiti tagging. The school's bathroom renovation project teeters on the brink of disaster as the new tagger Stainless strikes at will. Without a lead on their hands, Fillmore and Ingrid turn to Randall Julian, a former vandal under the tag name Flava Seva, who's currently in solitary detention. While Randall does help the pair get back on the right track, he escapes detention and complicates the situation for the safety patrol. Now they have to hunt down Stainless and Flava Seva before either of them strike again. Fillmore, this is still wet. <gasps> Number 3. Field Trip of the Just Gildan Stern the Tarantula, belly up. Eric Orban with a chemical of undetermined origin. Well, well. The science department's tarantula mascot is poisoned, and all signs point to Eric Orban, who's escaped into the city after becoming a prime suspect. Fillmore receives a license to go track Eric down, but not without some complications. As if things couldn't even be more inconvenient, Fillmore also has to contend with a relentless opponent from his bad boy past while trying to solve the case. Now all we have to do is wait for your little friend Fillmore to show up and wait sober, Turk! Number 2. The Currency of Doubt <gasps> Oh, honey, it's our lucky day, T. Oh, why do you collect these silly tickets? For the prizes, Glassnost. Lighten up. Smoits function as a form of currency that kids can use to get pretty much anything they want. When dance duo Tony and Tina's large Smoit stash goes missing, Fillmore and Ingrid go undercover and venture into ex-middle school's underground casino scene. The two discover Toby's gambling habits and make him out to be the prime suspect, which destroys his dance partnership with Tina. Case closed. Or is it? Candy is dandy. <laughs> oh, Lady Luck was with you, friend. You must give me a chance to win back my smoids. And number one, play on, maestro, play on. All right, then, you can quote this. The Ultra Box is the biggest thing for gaming since electricity. I'd do anything to have one of my own. A new game system on the market called the Ultra Box makes its way to X Middle School, and everybody wants one, including the Maestro, a gaming mastermind who will stop at nothing until he gets this new game system for himself. Fillmore and Ingrid track him down, but the Ultra Box gets stolen while he's in custody, which means there's a copycat on the loose. They soon find out that there's plenty more to this case than meets the eye. You want it? <laughs> Play you for it? Oh, you're on. And you are so dead. Me? <laughs> I could beat you in my sleep. What did you think of our list? Before you leave, don't forget to give this video a like and leave your thoughts in the comments below. Check out these other videos from The Rewind and don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon so you never miss another video again.